John Smith Baker, founder of Fathers in the Field. Unreasonable fear in boys without fathers is pretty natural. I saw it in my first field buddy and see it in Braden. Everything from being afraid to hold a fish to being afraid of mannequins, you know, in a museum. There's not a man there that says, hey, that's no big deal, don't worry about it. I was so creeped out that um, I didn't like that place. And I went in there and there wasn't that scary after all. Goodness. That now you don't have to worry about it anymore, right? A kid who was born and raised in Wyoming being afraid to hold a fish after he caught it seems pretty strange to me for a boy. There's no shortcuts in this ministry working with a boy who's experienced uh, a very deep uh, spiritual father wound. It's one boy at a time. It's uh, standing in the gap with him, walking with him uh, throughout his life, developing that relationship so that you can begin to speak into that boy's life the truth about forgiveness, about how he needs to forgive his earthly father and how we can grow together uh, and support each other where we've been hurt. I wasn't quite sure who I was and I'm still finding that out now. And just learning about the Heavenly Father and trying to be a better person with people around me and is teaching me a lot about the outdoors. He, you know, he was somewhat angry a, a, a little bit when he was younger, you know, he, he had met his dad before, didn't understand, you know, why, why those things were happening. The whole father, you know, abandonment um, issue. God made men and women different, and we have different roles and different personalities and different traits. The two grow a healthy young child. That's why God made a family. That's why God made fathers and mothers. And when one's gone, the family is broken and the relationship and the growth opportunities are broken. So, you know, really the kid is damaged, especially a father being so important to a young boy's growth into a man. You know, just a couple, I think I want to say like a year and a half maybe into the program, he decided that he wanted to get baptized at the church that the organization is founded through and that was a huge step for him. One of the most exciting things as a pastor was when Mason committed his life to the Lord. I had the incredible privilege of baptizing him in front of our congregation, but also in front of three generations of his family that came to watch. And it was really a joy to see his great-grandparents, grandparents, his mom there as well. I hope that he will commit his life uh, to the Heavenly Father that blessed him so much, and he will grow up to really serve him. and perhaps even do what I'm doing is help mentor boys that he knows perhaps better than anybody what it's like to grow up without a dad. My father took off on our family when my mom was pregnant with me and you know there was always something missing in my life when I'm young you don't really understand what's missing and there's not a man you know who's naturally supposed to be your hero is not there. You become angry because your hero has thrown you out. You feel like well what did I do wrong? What's wrong with me? And then you have society that's telling you that you don't need a dad, big boys don't cry, get over it. And they suppress this anger, this bitterness, which is a natural response to a father leaving. Instead, we should be telling him what your father did was terribly wrong, will matter greatly in your life, but through the power of Christ, forgiveness of that father, you know, there is healing and you're able to still grow and become the man that God intended you to be. Uh, it doesn't mean you won't walk with a limp or have some scars in your life, but there is hope for fatherless boys if, if a godly man, you know, can introduce them to their father in heaven. You're, so your birthday's in September 4th, and you're going to go hunting. Yeah. What are you going to go hunt? Elk. Antelope. You're going antelope hunting. Awesome. That's my favorite fruit. That's your favorite fruit? <laughs> Well, <laughs> antelope could be a fruit. <laughs> it is. Uh, <laughs> antelope is my favorite.